Understand that he's my nephew, so all these accolades, all this expression is for the love that he feels in oh, his heart. Stop it. For me having raised him. <laughs> <laughs> this is none other than Dr. Caroline Isis Fuqua. And if we had a studio audience, I'd be like, clap it up right now, clap it up, clap it up. Um, how are you? I'm really well. I'm really well, traveling a lot, busy, but well and happy very good very good so this person let me just share a little bit um obviously she's family she's my mom's sister um but the wealth of information and knowledge that that one individual can have is so amazing she she's who i went to egypt with last year you guys have seen the videos that i posted and I've shared with you guys how overwhelmingly emotional that trip was and the information and the education that um, I gathered was from this lovely lady right here. So we're just going to dig into her field of expertise um, and we're just going to we're just going to freestyle a little bit and hopefully you can take some some nuggets away from this conversation. And that's what we're doing at the Brooklyn Report. We're keeping it real. It's all about growth, baby. Um, what are you most passionate about? Transformation. You know, it's really important to me for everyone to realize that there is nothing but God. It's very important for me to realize that God can only experience what has been created through the eyes and ears, nose, mouth, hands, feet, and heart of the created. And it is really important for me that everyone realizes that they are streaming divinity, that they are continually streaming the divine. Uh, so many people feel separated and alone and, and lonely. But we have with us the spirit of the living God standing really just right over our, our left shoulder and just always available you know we have but to ask and then ask believing just as you were taught growing up Jesus said if you if you want something ask believing knowing that it is already yours and that's a very important piece know that it's already yours that everything that the Father has has already been downloaded into our hearts and into our consciousness and all we have to do is bring it forth but you can't bring it forth feeling other than the stream of the divine. You have to feel in that flow and in that, in, that, in that essence and energy of the divine to really feel worthy of all that should be coming to you and could be coming to you if you know who you are. Mm. <laughs> right out the gate. Hitting you over the head right out the gate. So one of my favorite sayings of yours which is what you're touching on is who you are is not up to you. But certainly who you say you are is. Okay, explain that. It is really important that we understand all the way, I am an Egyptologist. I study and teach Egyptian mysticism. Egypt mysticism is the mother of all the religions and there's so many ways you can research that to, to verify it. But it is the mother of all religions. And, and in Egyptian mysticism, we are taught that 
the great hidden energy or consciousness that we know of as God chose to experience his, her, its creation. And the only way that that could happen is if vehicles of experience could be created and actually see those beautiful sunsets and full moons and smell those beautiful flowers and hear those magnificent symphonies. In order for the nominal to experience the phenomenal, there had to be an, a middleman. And we are that middleman. We are that son of the great creator father. And the only thing that we know that, that the father, that the creator wanted to experience and express through us, but if we don't remember that, we can get busy thinking we're on our own with a purpose that we have to find. We don't have to find our purpose. We were created with and for a purpose, much like our creating an automobile. See, we created the automobile so that we could move from one place to another easily and comfortably. God created man, woman, so that the energy of the living God could move comfortably from one place to, the, to another. And so we were created as the image and likeness of God. If we can remember that, if we can say that, if we can know that, because that is indeed what happened. We were created as the image and likeness of God, as a stream of the divine. Now, if we start saying we're something else, if we start saying we are our names, our races, our religions, if we start saying that we have nothing, if we don't find a purpose of our own, then we're going to be in trouble. That would be us making up who we are rather than connecting to who we were created to be. So who we were created to be and who God says we are is indeed who we are. You know, it's I remember <laughs> one of the first conversations that we had about it, mm -hmm. you were like, who are you? Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm Brooklyn. I'm a, I'm a man. And you said, if your answer is not, you're the image and likeness of God, downloaded source energy, thought manifested in a physical form, then it's the wrong answer. And you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle. You're going to spend your whole life trying to come up with an identity when you were given one with your creation. So we're going to speak more about that. We'll be right back with more with the Brooklyn Report, Dr. Caroline Cease Fuqua. We're talking about identif identifying yourself properly. So I know I was guilty of identifying with my ego, separate. And what I understand from, from my auntie is that the ego can never be perfect, whole, and complete. And if I identify myself correctly, with that which I am, which is the image and likeness of God, which is the law of polarity, the opposite is whole, perfect, and complete, then everything else just becomes a divine stream of consciousness. So I want you to continue on where we left off with the idea of proper identification and how that relates to not necessarily having to find your purpose. It's already kind of pre-wired into your DNA. We have, um, first of all, Circles of Light Ministries. We have a prison ministry. And we were in Detroit, in one of the prisons, and I was speaking about the divinity of, of, of the human being, the natural divinity, just based on the fact that we were created as an instrument for the divine, a, a download channel, if you will, of the divine. And so one of the inmates asked me, if we are so divine what are we doing in here mm. great question yeah. nobody ever told you that you were divine that never everybody told you that that jesus was divine that maybe buddha was divine maybe some of the other Lao Tse or but nobody ever spoke about your divinity your purpose why you're here so you grew up then thinking you didn't take out the trash you're bad you didn't share with your brother, you're wrong. You didn't get a good grade, you're stupid. All of these things now, because as an ego, as a growing up little personality, you're not going to be streaming the divine in your everyday activity. You're going to be selfish maybe with your toys or lazy with your homework or a little bit sloppy with your chores. And that's what gets nailed. 
just a constant hammering on how bad and how wrong and how slack you are. But what remains true is what God said. There was a movie called Inception. A few years back, a movie called Inception where... DiCaprio? No. I think it might have been Matt Damon. I, I'm, but I'm not sure. Okay, okay, okay. The, the idea of, of this inception, you plant an idea in yeah. the mind, is it DiCaprio? Yeah, 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 no, you no, plant yeah. and then you lock it in a safe. Yeah, yeah. All right. That each individual ego has an idea of himself that is locked in a safe, that is brought in from, from his zero to seven, from his past, brought in, and that's how he's identifying himself. But there is a larger inception that came through at creation. A larger inception where God said, this is what I'm doing. And from Alpha to Omega, I'm looking at what you're going to go through. And I'm saying it's good. And I'm the creator. So no matter what your behavior is, after I finish with my period, this is good. This will work for me. You are my instrument, my channel. Period. So you see, we, no matter what we do, we can't change the original idea or the original inception about who we are. So it is very, very important that we forget about and forgive all negative, if you will, behavior. Forget about what we did when we didn't know who we were. Forget about what we did when we were afraid and get back to what was said when we were created. This is my son in whom, I'm, whom I am well pleased was not just meant for Jesus. Just as Jesus said, our father. <laughs> Not my father, but our father, and these things in greater shall you do. This was a very important piece. We have to get back to our father, our inheritance, who we are, why we are. Let's get back to asking, what would you have me do, rather than what can I come up with to do? Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting that you say that because I always get looked at sideways when I tell people, like you are God. Mm -hmm. You are inside of every creation is the creator. That's right. So why is it so far fetched when we somebody, me or whoever is asking you to behave as if you're God? If, if your yeah. parents birth you right. and they can look at you and go, wow, my child looks like me. That's right. Your parents are the creator. You're the creation. They're, you're, you're within them and they're in you. So if God is the, the father and the mother of, of all, why is that such a radical idea to embrace the fact that you are divine, that you are God in physical form? Well, you know, Brooklyn, it is really important that people understand that they won't be able to do that if they think they're God. Okay. But they will okay. be able to do it if they realize everything is God. Gotcha. There is nothing manifest in form that does not come out of the mind of God. Okay. Everything, therefore, is carrying a spark of the divine. Everything that is God. Trees, birds, everything, the ocean. Yeah. Everything came out of the mind of God, and an idea cannot leave its source. An idea. We are an idea in the mind of God cannot leave its source. Okay. Hamlet cannot be separate from Shakespeare. Okay, okay. And we cannot be separate from our Creator. Therefore, we are all carrying that stream of the divine as we move forward from the mind of God into form. We are walking into form as that. Very, very important. It is majorly important that we, that we come back to the truth about who we are and Turn away from the illusion. The illusion is that we are bodies, that we are is like races, that we are religions, that we are men and women. We are not. We are a stream of the divine choosing roles, choosing roles, and playing out those roles. If we realize that they are roles, we'll play them much more successfully. Like a good actor, we put the role on when we come in, we play the role to the hilt, when it's time, the curtain comes down, we take the roll off, we put it down, and keep moving as the perfection of the divine. What more can I say? Oh, we have to say. <laughs> All right, we will be right back with more Killing the Game right now. The Brooklyn Report. We'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> 
thought we was done, but we're not. Um, we're back once again with the Brooklyn Report. Special guest, Dr. Caroline Isis Fuqua, my lovely auntie. Um, so in the last segment, you gave a great example about um, the prison ministry mm -hmm. and explaining to the individuals about role playing and roles and and during the break we, we ex expanded on that idea of just how people will come up to me and go what do you do and I'll say I'm an actor and then immediately they'll have characteristics or traits or preconceived notions about what it means to be an actor and I always have to stop them and go wait that's just something that I do it's not who I am who I am is the image and likeness of God with no problems right no problems this whole perfect and complete as you mentioned earlier the law of polarity in order to have whole perfect and complete on one end you have to have flawed broken and and lacking on the other end that's just the way it is in, in, in creation, polarities. So if you identify yourself as the illusion <clears throat> and not the truth, you're going to end up with the problems associated with each of your roles. There are problems, <clears throat> sorry, if you list being a male, mm -hmm. there are problems with being a male. There are problems with being a white male, problems with being a black male. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are problems with being any particular individuated religion or sex or gender or whatever it is there are going to be problems with it so you can don the robes of a black female teacher as I did but if you identify yourself with that you're going to come in thinking therefore I'm going to have a problem here a problem here and a problem here the problems are going to be in the roles naturally the problems are not going to be in who I am. The problems are going to be in the role that I take. If I take the role and own that as who I am, I'm going to be stuck with the problems associated with that role. Right. And because, you know, really quickly, and you're always on me about being meticulous with the laws of the universe, understanding that life is a game, there are rules to certain and to, to games. If we were playing basketball and some of us show up with football equipment on, it's going to be an uncomfortable game. But if we have the proper equipment, right, we're already ahead of it. Then we learn to, to how to effectively manage the rules. Now we begin to excel at the game. So we mentioned law of polarity, but really quickly, um, and we're not going to have a whole lot of time to explain them all, but just the, the first seven, the law of mentalism, the law of correspondence, the law of vibration, the law of polarity, polarity consequence, or the law of cause and effect, the law of rhythm, and the law of gender. Right. Okay, so we just spoke about the law of polarity, but really know the first one, the law of mentalism, which says thoughts become things. Right? You're, we all are part of the, the all-knowing mind that's everywhere, omnipotent, all the time. She mentioned that, that everything is an expression of God. Mm -hmm. So your words, your thoughts, your vibration, your frequency are going to produce results. So all of these laws tie together. Um, speak about... It's, it's oh, okay. really important that you examine your belief system. Now there are five major categories that you're going to have to really know what you're thinking around money, what you're thinking around relationship, mm -hmm. what you're thinking around your physical body, what you're thinking around your spirituality what you're thinking around relationship did we say that we say relationships money spirituality physical Crea creativity 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 what you choose to do these it's, it's mandatory that you understand what you believe if you have a belief that you don't even know you have about money not being enough never having enough not being able to make it from paycheck to paycheck you may not really know that you're holding that belief. You're going to have to watch yourself and listen to yourself and listen to the people around you because the people around you will inform you about what you're thinking based on the law of attraction. You will attract people who agree with you even when you don't know that you're agreeing with them. So if somebody walks up and says, you know, you really are stupid. All right, I'll let that go one time. Two people walk up. You know, you really are stupid. I may let that go and I may not. Third time, I, 
have to think to myself, where do you think you're stupid? Because in order for this to keep coming to you, it's got to be coming from you. Yes. And that <laughs> is the law of consequences. Whew. Everything that goes around comes around, and what comes to me has to first come from me. Where do I think I'm stupid? Where do I think I don't have enough money? Where do I think relationships don't work? Because if I believe, without knowing I believe it, but sitting in my subconscious base, if I believe that relationships don't work, I don't care how great the man or woman, then relationships simply will not work. You heard it here. You're hearing it. Um, let's let's keep it. Let's keep rolling. Uh, we were talking about. We we went over some of the laws in the universe. Um, did we talk about purpose? Let's speak a little bit about purpose. And but before I do that. I want to say something. I, I spent a lot of time in Ghana, West Africa, and, and I work with the people there in a village called Big Road. One of the things that I do is I make two charts, you know, stand-up charts, and I ask them to describe God. And they come up with all these fabulous words like loving and, and compassionate and merciful and all these fabulous words, abundance and and forgiveness. Then I asked them to make a chart on man slash woman. Sinful, greedy, lazy, <laughs> all these negative, and they, I mean, really, liar, sick, just a, just a list of really negative things. And then I asked them, how do you identify yourself? Do you identify yourself as the image and likeness of God? or as a man or a woman. And they all go completely silent because they have all these negative thoughts and feelings about themselves and each other. Completely separate from what they could be thinking about themselves and others based on the identification as the image and likeness of God. And I want to say that. The second thing I have when I travel around the world is I run into people, I ask people, what is your purpose? What do you think the purpose of life is? And they always answer with some lofty ideal, if you will, to be loving, to be happy, to be creative, to write a book, to paint a picture, to be a mother. So this then becomes the mindset, the human mindset. What is your purpose? What is the purpose of life? My next question always is, what happens if you live and die and you're not happy? If you live and die and you don't write a book or paint a picture or have a child? Does then life have no purpose? Does life have no purpose if you can't come up with one? Then I ask, what is the purpose of the dress you're wearing? You'll say, to cover me, to keep me warm, to, to be attractive. What is the purpose of the car you're driving? To get me from place to place. What is the purpose of the job that you're doing? To make money and to put food on my table. So then I say, everything I just asked you was what you create. You created the dress, you created the car, you created the job or your employment. You have a purpose for what you're doing. And it's very clear in your mind. What makes you think then that you have to come up with a purpose for what God created? <laughs> for what created you? For what created you? You? Why would you have to come up with a purpose for what created you? And does life have no purpose if you don't fulfill what you came up with? See, life has a purpose. God had a purpose. But your purpose is being fulfilled every single day that you wake up. Without you finding a purpose, your purpose is being fulfilled because you were created to experience creation. You cannot help but see and notice the beauty of a sunrise or a full moon. You cannot help but notice the fragrance of a rose. You cannot help but notice the beauty in music or the love from one person to another. You are fill, fulfilling your purpose every single day that you're alive just by experiencing life and appreciating it. We just gonna have a moment of silence right now, okay?
okay? Because I don't think y'all really understand the jewels that's being dropped on y'all. You have a purpose, whether you come up with it or not, the fact that you awaken every single day, that's your purpose. That's your purpose. We're out here trying to figure out what our purpose in life is. The, the, the image, or not the image, but the stream of conscience that created you, created you for that very purpose. To taste the mangoes, to smell the roses, to listen to the symphonies. You are fulfilling your function. To now laugh, you choose to do, to, to play, laugh, woo. to cry, to love, to play. If you want to do something else, so be it. But don't think you're yeah. worthless if you don't come yeah. up with something. It doesn't define you. No, okay. absolutely not. Um, all right, we're running out of time, unfortunately. But I promise you, this will not be the last conversation that we have with this lady. Um, she's so powerful. Um, the one thing that I want to reiterate to everybody is what I get hit over the head with all the time is you have to be meticulous with the laws of the universe. If it shows up in your experience, you did it. You're responsible for it. Stop blaming people and circumstances and situations for things that are happening to you. You guys are not victims. Okay? If I'm planting, if I think I'm planting strawberries and oranges show up, then I have to accept that I wasn't planting strawberries. <laughs> okay? And not curse the ground because, well, I was planting strawberries. Somebody must have snuck in here and planted some oranges when I wasn't. No, you did it. You're responsible for it. And because you're that powerful, if you created the oranges, by law, if I change my seed, I will produce a different fruit. That should be empowering. Not making you afraid or, or, or scared and stuff like that, but come on. All right? Brooklyn Report, baby. We back in full effect. We'll see you next time. Peace. You I love you. Hey, we love you.